But do you think there's yeah. a floor to the internet where just people stop no. being stupid, or do you think it just increases every day? Yeah, no. no. Like, like those giant movie trailers and stuff like that that have all these comments. It's like, why even bother? I never comment. No, like who that. cares? What are you gonna say? Looks good. Doesn't look good. I wish there was more to this trailer. <laughs> I can't wait for Justice League Part 2. A five minute trailer? I wish there was like two and a half more hours to this trailer. Wow. I'm so glad I saw all the best parts of it already. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is worse than yeah. Star Trek Into Darkness? Oh yeah, way worse. Actually, I agree because I like Into Darkness. Like Batman vs Superman, you can at least point to like some really big glaring like faults that you could like at least fix. Mm. But like, Amazing Spider-Man 2, like... It's the screenplay. That's what it is. But, like... If you just, if you just tell someone the, the, what happens in that movie, you'll instantly see what's wrong. It's like... It makes just, no sense. Just explain some of the things that happens in that movie. Harry Osborn has, like... Is, like, poisoned or something like that. He has, that like, a degenerative... A degenerative like disease because his, of his dad, who is yeah. also in the movie, which turns you into a goblin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> has goblin hands. And dies, yeah. and then he needs Spider-Man's blood to save him. Which, and this movie is written by the same people. Star Trek Into Darkness. Kirk is also saved by magic blood. Okay, not not the Rhino part, but I actually like the ending with the the kid. Anyway, I actually think that's cool. Wait, what are we talking about? Actually, both scenes where Andrew Garfield interacts with a small child. Who happens to like Spider-Man are the best parts of both of those movies. In the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Like in the first one, there's not a whole lot to defend about those movies. But I, I think that the like interaction that he has with, with the kids in the movie uh, is, is, is actually a, a nice like wink to how like the audience generally interacts like with Spider-Man or why they like Spider-Man in the first place. Like the one where they're like hanging off the bridge in the first one, he like tells the kid to put on the mask, it'll make you strong. I think that's actually an yeah. awesome line. That's that's a that's actually a really solid line. And like the same with the other one where like how S Spider Man and all those kind of comic book characters anyway, like function inside and how they, you know, give kids, you know, something to look up to. About the the best parts of those movies, those are my favorite parts of those movies. And the fact that like Amazing Spider Man two actually ends on that note before he runs and no, jumps. No, it, do it doesn't end rhino. on that note. It ends on trailer bait. Are there other movies? I'm sure there's other movies where men give birth to, to children, right? Or is that the only one? I don't. Because I was trying to think of another of example of that happening. Alien? <laughs> oh, he does get kind of human. The chest burster? <laughs> he gives happens? birth to it. I mean, that's the does idea. Does that count? He takes little alien to like the, <laughs> the, the <laughs> playground. Now, other children didn't burst from the chests <laughs> of their mothers. So, you know, just try not to mention that and you'll be fine. George, I'm going to get off this green screen platform onto the green screen floor to your green screen room and tell you something. This is not how humans communicate. I think they just didn't want to talk to George Lucas because I think if they went to him, he'd be like, you know, I could rewrite the script. I think it needs a little bit more Jar Jar Binks. Moving on to other things, we actually have a sponsor today, and can we bring, can we bring out our, our sponsor here? Yeah, here we, we go. got that lucky, we have a sponsor for today. Yeah, yeah, this episode of On a Roll is brought to you by the new, the newest uh, subscription box that you can order. It's called the Boxo Stuff, and uh, in order to sell it to you guys, we were told to just give it to one of our, uh, cast members and let them sell it based on what they see. Yeah, and experience the greatness that is box. Boxo stuff. stuff. Yeah. Just from so. just from the first opening it, mm -hmm. they'll know. We'll hey, give it to know? we'll hand it over to Rachel. You guys, you guys know this, right? Yeah. yeah. So just You're good. Open uh, it up and just just tell us what's yeah, yeah. inside. What's and inside? tell us why our audience should oh. Oh. You, you go for it. Just Let's pour see. it out or something. Here. Just pour yeah. it onto the table. Just go for it. There you go. Oh, oh. look at that <laughs> boxo stuff. Is this a bullet? <laughs> oh, oh, we got some, some bottle Open caps. University hand sanitizer. All right, you guys have uh, one minute. One minute. We're gonna we're to gonna time you. This. Yeah, you you have one minute to sell this new subscription service uh, for Boxo stuff. Boxo stuff. Indeed. All right. This is a wine bottle cap. <laughs> Bacardi cap. Ooh. All right. What <laughs> else is in there? Uh, 
um, what is it some called? <laughs> some liquor <Elbrecht>. talks. <laughs> yeah. Why would, why, why would someone need this? A cigar. Right. A tag. Yeah. <laughs> The purge election year. So is this just like Donald Trump's past election year? <laughs> a grizzly bear, some pennies. Are we selling it right now? Yes. Are you guys ready to sell yes. it? You have one minute. Oh, yeah. Wait. All right, I'm gonna give you a countdown. Three, two, one, and the pitch four boxo stuff begins do right you, now. Do you hate your friends? <laughs> Buy a subscription for boxo stuff. We'll ship them a box full of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be very what confused. What stuff is in Box of Stuff? You got a screw. What items can you expect in Box of Stuff? But no drill, so they're going to have to buy that. What is that? That is a patented Box of Stuff inside the Box of Stuff. <laughs> Inceptional <laughs> Box. Yeah, Inceptional Box. Purchased. We got, got some change, some hardcore change. Yeah, you make some of your money back if you buy it. Yeah. You make a whole 18 cents back. Ooh, an L bracket. <laughs> and screws. Included. And screws. You guys have 20 seconds. You gotta wrap this pitch up. You You're can not mount some them. stuff. Oh, oh my god. But more crazy. importantly, if you hate your friends, <laughs> buy them. This. Yeah, you get so many caps. All kinds of caps. Caps. Okay. What about the bear? Right. The grizz. And hand sanitizer to go with it. Come on, guys. And a bullet. Or whatever. Is it a bullet? End of so pitch. So we have lost well done. our first sponsorship. Yeah, it was uh, well, we tried. I hope you will Are still indulge and in, uh, purchase the box and stuff. You will never know when you'll get in it. Mm -hmm. You might get whatever the hell this is. You got, or you a got, grizzly bear. you got the the loot crates and the 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 loot aku and and all those other things. But, but in those, really, you know what you're getting. Yeah. This is no. a complete, complete. I don't even have a word. See, they for go it. the route of like they have themed boxes. This one is just, you just, they like went through their counter and they just threw everything that they found Maybe in there. Maybe a box they found Which in is in no way what happened in order to make this segment. But anyway, boxo stuff, put it well, back. well sold. Yeah, now you guys get to, to put everything back. So, you know, enjoy that. We don't take it easy on our crew. We always shuttle them to weird places too. Like, uh, like Your actually house. our oh, switcher, our switcher Corey, um, he he uh, was with us when we were shooting our final for um, uh, the first production class, oh, and we had to drag yeah. him and everyone on our production crew to Pontiac at like six o'clock at night, and then shove them in this very creepy uh, library basement. basement. Yeah, bought it, pizza. What? <laughs> we did, wait, no, Lizzie bought pizza. We didn't even buy the pizza. <laughs> The product, the, <laughs> they got pizza, is the proper way to say that. The crew had to bring their own pizza to feed themselves. Oh, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're like just you want them to add on to our that horrible help. production? They weren't there for that. Yeah, they really they weren't, weren't there, there for that. They're <laughs> just an embodiment of what I'm talking about. How do they make it of how we mistreat really our crew members? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Transformers are here. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Even Rachel's mm, like. Mm. The last one was not as good. It was not. With the what was the spiky, last good one? The, spiky the dinosaurs. dinosaurs that breathe fire. That were in it for three seconds. Yeah. And then Optimus Prime just rides them around for the okay, rest of the this, movie. This next one though does have like medieval like. The dinosaurs come back. No, they're still in it. At yeah. some point, like it has a like, King Arthur time. How do you it. think that? I want to know how it fits into this. They're like, movie. get the catapults, oh, yeah. and then the, the robot just moves. The, like, ro there's a robot dragon in this one. It's just like, oh no! <laughs> get the bow and arrows. <laughs> we'll take them out. <laughs> Well, it's gonna be something like the 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 transform or like the Autobots and like the Decepticons like inspired some kind of legend, right? That's what it's gonna turn out to be. It's somehow. gonna be terrible. <laughs> it's got it's gotta be something King like Arthur that. was really a robot. The, the story for the mummy. The mummy. Yeah. I think this I'm gonna, gonna I think I'm gonna go see the mummy. I think but with gonna so I'm gonna bad. go with a picture of Brendan Fraser cut out and just put it <laughs> over <laughs> <to> Tom Cruise. <laughs> so it's like the person sitting behind you. What's he doing? What is he doing? I hope the person behind me is doing the same thing. Like, oh, that's a good idea. And everyone goes and pulls it up on their phone. And then you just see theaters of it. You should just tape him to like the poster. And that's when they ask, where did Brendan Fraser go? He just died. But wow. this mummy movie is the start of the cinematic universe. Did you know this? Are you aware of this? Oh, okay. Russell Crowe plays more? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's like Universal So he's Monsters. just Russell Crowe. Wait, did, wait, did so they announce a, another movie? 
that. Where did Russell Crowe play? He plays Doctor like in the Mummy. Wait, you, what? If you look at the Wikipedia, it goes Russell Crowe as Doctor Jekyll slash Mister Hyde. What? I yes. did not hear Are anything about me? that. Look it up. This is a thing. Two facts. I know they're doing a cinematic universe. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But I heard they were doing a Helsing, Van Helsing movie and uh, an Invisible Man. I think. Yeah, Swamp I thought. Thing. I still. Oh are, my God, he's right. What? What does he do? Or are they just like, we need help to to take down this mummy? I know a guy. His name's. I know a guy. He goes Brooklyn. Henry Jekyll. <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn. Where's yours? <laughs> That's interesting. What? Does he get his own movie then, Money or just? Man. Is he just like the Hawkeye in in uh, Thor, where he just kind of shows up? He like says like two lines, and then he's like, he'll be in the Avengers movie. Look forward to that. I assume so. To be fair, does Russell Crowe even have to play J Mr. Hyde in <laughs> Dr. Jekyll? He's just, just crazy himself. Already. Yeah, he's just himself. Just a gladiator. I'm in the nice guys, even though I'm not nice. <laughs> For our screenwriting course, we would read scripts we would read scenes from famous movies and then we were we would have to like riff on them so we would have to like make the scene our own so the scene that you guys are reading today is the um the scene from unforgiven when he says it's a hell of a thing killing a man but instead of it being a western it's about a kid and a gunslinger who have had their first experience eating hot pockets <laughs> so it is it's very right. bad. Um, Looking forward to it. Did you have uh, rolls, uh, rolls Two. ready for people? <laughs> Zach, would you like to do the narration? I can do that. Um, Noah, would you like to be money? Or money? <laughs> Is that Clint Eastwood? Yeah, that's Clint Eastwood. He has a really odd. <laughs> and would you like to be the kid, Rachel? I guess so. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> but enjoy, enjoy. It's a. Uh, Mick Morogi, everyone. It's a hell of a thing. <laughs> oh, no. All right. And this is written in uh, uh, screenplay format, so uh, we're going to read it like one. Oh, Interior, no. dining room, open on. A darkly lit room. A darkly lit dining room illuminated only by candlelight. It is half past six on a snowy, blistering cold Sunday. View on money. Standing by a window, watching an old lady struggling to walk through the snow in the distance. Is that what it was like at the turn of the millennium when you got hungry and just popped in a hot pocket and went to town on it all that blistering hot pizza sauce squirting out at you so am i supposed to have a song next time yeah <laughs> 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 the kid is behind money sitting down at the dining table in the middle of the room he takes a drag from his whiskey bottle <laughs> whiskey bottle yeah i mean i don't really know kid it was a long time in a time where Hot Pockets were much different. Shit. <laughs> I thought that Hot Pocket was gonna, gonna burn a hole straight through my mouth and out the back of my head. That damn sauce was like an inferno. Me too. Was you ever scared of the pizza sauce? Money turns from watching the old lady struggle to get her footing in the thick winter snow. <laughs> he walks over to where the kid is sitting. I don't remember, kid. Back in those days, I was on so much cocaine <laughs> and gummy bears. I have no real memory anymore. My mouth could have been on, on fire from the sauce and wouldn't have made a goddamn bit of difference to me. Money walks back to the window. The old lady is now on her back like an <laughs> incapacitated turtle flaying her arms and legs, begging for help. Flaying? <laughs> That's what it says there. It yes. says flaying. Flailing, I'm pretty sure what, is, what it was meant to be. I ate that son of a bitch hot pocket in three fucking seconds, man. I thought it was going to be so streaming like all the books said it would be, but it wasn't. It was just cold and full of disappointment. The kid I takes another swig of his whiskey. The kid does? Wow. <laughs> was that your first one? My first hot pocket? Yeah, kid. Was that the first one you pushed down your gullet into your stomach? Question mark. Yeah, first one I ever had. Yeah. I only ever prepared them for other people to eat. 
I worked at a Hot Pocket restaurant once, but I never ate none of them. Well, you did now. <laughs> Hell yeah, I did. I slammed that fucker in the microwave, <laughs> pulled it out, and gobbled it down. Had sauce falling down my chin, and... The kid can no longer hold back his guilt. He begins to weep. Take another drink, kid. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It don't, it don't seem real. How can people eat those <laughs> things? It just ain't right. And the pepperoni inside. Oh, Jesus, the pepperoni. It's a hell of a thing, you know, hot pocket. It takes away all the dignity you've got. And all you're ever going to have. Well, I guess there's always tomorrow's dinner, right? Not when hot pockets are involved. <laughs> We're scarred. Nick Morogi, everybody. <laughs> well done. Sorry well done. about the...